Hi everyone, Kathy Rose here. I'm here to talk to you about the astrological patterns for July 2023. It's fascinating because right now outside there is a very powerful thunderstorm going on, crashing thunder and flashes of lightning and pouring rain. And I thought to myself how perfect that is to describe July because July has some stormy astrological patterns. That's not a negative, so I'm not trying to be fearful or um, dark in my interpretations. But the fact of the matter is there are some challenging aspects that happen in July and the stormy astrological weather is perfect right now while I'm going through this storm outside. So let me begin by drawing your attention to the Cancer Mandala on screen. The sun is traveling through the sign Cancer and Cancer is a, a water sign. It's emotional, compassionate, mothering, nurturing. And it's important to bring that into the picture because there are some very dynamic patterns going on that are not so nurturing. So we have to remember this background cancer energy as we go through July. The themes for this month, we're going to be very much working with the Pluto power, understanding Pluto at the anoretic degree of Capricorn. I've mentioned this in many, many videos in the past that as Pluto finishes this transit in Capricorn, we're dealing with understanding how to use power in large structures and true empowerment that comes from within. But we're also gonna be examining ego regulation and that's because there's a lot of Leo activity in July. Uh, Mars finishes the transit through Leo on July 10th. Mercury enters Leo on July 11th. Venus begins the retrograde phase in Leo on July 22nd. So you hear Leo, 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 which is understanding how to use ego at a higher level. Uh, Mid-month, we also have the North Node retrograding back into Aries, leaving Taurus and entering Aries. And at that time, the North and South Node will be square Pluto, again, echoing what I said with Pluto power. There are many Pluto statements as we go through July. Let me explain. We begin with the full moon in Capricorn on July 3rd, 7.39 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So this is a very complicated full moon because we have the sun and the moon, I'm, I'm sorry, sun and Mercury conjunct in Cancer opposite the moon in Capricorn. And in a way to summarize this succinctly, which is what moon in Capricorn likes to do, this is engaging the body, mind, spirit connection. This is understanding intuitive signals that come th comes through the body, operating through our indicator muscles. Indicator muscles tell us when we are eating something toxic or in a dangerous situation or moving in a direction that's not good for us, comes through the body and actually signals us um, as an intuitive signal often. And this full moon is talking about being efficient with your intuition. So rather than wondering, is this intuitive signal correct? Should I do something about it? I wonder what this intuition means. Rather than that, it's saying, of course it means something. Now, what do I do with it? How can I use this intuitive signal to be more efficient and dynamic and strategic and get things done in life? So this is very important, efficient use of body, mind, spirit connection. And that's echoed and reinforced by the aspect that is annotated in blue on screen. And that is Pluto at the 29th degree of Capricorn in a Quinta Chile to Mercury. Quinta Chile is 165 degree aspect. That was brought forward by my good friend and mentor, Noel Till. When we see Pluto-Mercury contact, we are talking about the empowerment in our thinking and using authority in our speech patterns, using power in what we communicate. Um, and really, it's just reinforcing what I said, the body-mind-spirit connection and being efficient with it. And truly what it's saying is we are more empowered when we merge intuition in all of our activities in life. The other thing about this full moon, which is very dynamic and powerful, 
is Venus Mars conjunct in Leo squaring Uranus and Cancer. I mean, I'm sorry, Uranus in Taurus. Now this really started to come into full flavor toward the end of June. So the last week of June, we were feeling this, but it's in full force on July 3rd during this full moon. When Venus Mars conjunct square Uranus is used well in these signs, then we get this beautiful, harmonious and graceful confidence that is able to step into the moment and problem solve and deal with what's ev whatever is happening with calmness and inspired, innovative thinking. And that's the most beautiful thing. When you have the confidence to say, whatever is happening, I can come up with a solution. I can find a, a way to solve this problem. I can ride the storm with full power and, and I can find a solution basically. That's using it on the most positive level, the ability to be in the present moment and to engage your creativity with confidence. If it's used on the shadow, <laughs> this is when we get into frustration, anger. This is when we get into pride, feeling insulted, and maybe stepping into behavior that you know engages the bully mentality or the arrogance or the beating of the chest saying, this is how great I am. And hmm, there are some politicians that are modeling that very behavior right now. So you know what you don't want to do. And you can take this to a higher level. So the bottom line here is during this full moon in Capricorn, understand there is an agitating energy in the background. You don't have to engage in the agitation. You can step up and be calm and use gracefulness and innovation together as you use your intuition efficiently. It's a really powerful full moon. Okay, next on screen is a mandala that I created many years ago that is connected to confidence. And in a way, I think this mandala is very much symbolizing the open heart chakra and the Leo energy. So if we were to look at the patterns happening, July 10th, Mars ends the transit in Leo and enters Virgo instead. Mars in Virgo is a very, very different dynamic. Mars says, take action infused with service and humility. Um, release your need for praise and just be efficient with your energy without any need for adoration or praise or um, being at the top of the pile. Just merge and blend and do a good job. That's Mars in Virgo. But that's happening on the same day Mercury's opposite Pluto. And remember, for the full moon, I said that Mercury was Quindicile Pluto. Now we have Mercury opposite Pluto. Well, it's the same energy working together, which says use your mind and your power together. Speak with authority that is loving instead of egotistical or tyrannical. Um, it's full body, mind, spirit connection infused with humility and service. July 11th, Mercury enters Leo. And when Mercury enters Leo, then we get into the opportunity to use this confidence and authority in our voice. Mercury in Leo says, speak from the heart. Let the heart energy work through the throat energy and out. Heart, heart chakra, throat chakra, communicating out to the world. And there's nothing more beautiful that when your words are flowing from your heart. Mercury enters Leo July 11th. Remember, that energy is available to you. Overall in July, we are really exploring leadership in so many ways. I talked about this also in the June forecast video. Well, it's coming up again intensely. Um, we get the opportunity to model leadership at a higher level. We get the opportunity to use a love-centered leadership that empowers others, not lords over others. 
but empowers people, inspires people to be their best, um, not compares people to different, different authority levels, but merges people and inspires them to live up to their highest level. Um, highest level of leadership shares a vision as opposed to the authority, like the alpha dog, the alpha human, you know, who is, who is trying to be in charge. It's a very different dynamic of leadership that is trying to come forward right now, really centered in July. We get many lessons. So July 17th, there is a new moon in cancer. I'm going to be doing a separate video on that, but what is noteworthy about that new moon is it's opposite Pluto. So again, we get the empowerment energy. We get true power infuses love and infuses compassion. And that's going to be very powerful during that new moon. So watch for that video. It will come out mid-month. July 20th, we get Mars opposite Saturn. Let me give you a little warning about this energy and how you can use it at the highest level. Mars and Saturn working together by conjunction square or opposition is kind of tricky. In this case, it will be opposite. And it's tricky because in the ideal world, you want to take the efficiency of Mars, um, the, the desire to get something done, the motivational energy of Mars, and you want to use it with a strategic discipline of Saturn. And when these two are working together, there's incredible resourcefulness and problem solving and enormous amount of work can be achieved and accomplished. But when they're not working together well, you get frustration, you get anger. Um, sometimes people become mean or even cruel. So, you know, there may be some people who respond to it that way. We don't, you know, we have no control how other people respond to it. But you can choose the higher level version, which is merge your motivational energy with discipline and get things done. And remember, right around July 20th, to observe and not absorb, because there may be people who get a bit cranky during that time. I don't want to program you into that, but in case it's around you, be aware. It's like the stormy weather going on outside right now. July 23rd, Venus begins the retrograde. It stays retrograde until September 3rd. It stays in Leo until early October. And I have said this before, Venus transiting Leo for this long period during the retrograde allows us to bring harmony and grace and beauty and lovingness into our leadership. And during the retrograde time, we also get the opportunity to examine all of our relationships energies to see if we've outgrown any particular relationships and to see if there's equality, if there's shared power in your relationships. But more than anything else, it is beauty and harmony coming into leadership energy. July 23rd, we also have Mercury square Uranus. Now this can be beautiful for uh, innovative ideas popping in, for brainstorming new ways to solve problems, for suspending um, your need to be in control and being completely present in the moment and coming up with these new innovative ideas. That's the highest way to use Mercury and Uranus energy together. But if you are prone to having a hyperactive nervous system or even potentially an anxiety response, then I want to remind you right around July 23rd, remember to breathe. Be very aware of your breathing every moment of every day, because this is a high electrical energy pattern with a lot of agitation. So you want to use it well. Mercury square Uranus, be in the present moment and trust and let the innovative light bulb ideas flow through you. July 27th, we have Mercury conjunct Venus. And again, this is incredibly creative thinking, incredibly creative and graceful communication energy wanting to flow. This can be so beautiful toward the end of July if you have ego regulation. 
if you have a healthy ego that doesn't need constant praise, doesn't need to be constantly special or bragging or arrogant, then this can be beautiful because it will operate with grace and charm and harmony rather than I'm special and you're not. So July 27th, remember, beautiful, harmonious, creative energy as possible. Final thoughts for July. This is a mandala I created years ago that was a reflection of the feminine polarity being used in leadership dynamics. So I called it the goddess of leadership. Uh, and this really symbolizes the Venus and Leo energy going on because Venus is trying to bring in some of the graceful, feminine, soft, harmonious energy into leadership dynamic. It's a different paradigm that is trying to manifest, not just for July, but for this coming period. It's really powerful. So as always, I am sending you much love and many, many blessings for July. You are up to the task of seed planting and role modeling a new level of leadership to the world. You can show other people what it's like to lead from the heart. And even if they are not leading from the heart, even if you're around people who are still doing the old way of leadership, which is more on the tyrannical power model, you can still show what it's like to lead from a heart-centered place. Never doubt the importance of modeling a new behavior and planting those seeds. Even if you don't see them germinate, you have done something very special. So I look forward to seeing you mid-month for the new moon video. And until then, be well and bye for now.